Hey, welcome guys. Uh, today we're going to be building the Aerial Hunter Killer from Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Now, I actually have two of these kits. I have the Pegasus model kit that is supposedly uh, 132nd scale, which is a plastic model kit. And then I recently got this vinyl kit, this old Horizon kit. Now, this is supposedly 135th scale. But I'm going to show you that something's terribly wrong because they should be, uh, as far as their scales, they should be very similar in size. We have 135th scale listed here. So this is a vinyl model kit. I've done a few vinyl kits. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with working with them. I think I'm going to do the vinyl one first. Uh, the reason being is I have the whole collection of the Pegasus Terminator 2. At least I think I have the whole collection. I have the aerial one. I have the tank hunter killer. And I also have the actual ter Terminators in a little diorama. I think it's like four or five Terminators. So I have all the sets of those. And maybe one day I can incorporate them all together in some kind of diorama. Um, so I'm just kind of holding off on this one, but uh, I want to go ahead and show you the scale of these. Listen, now again, this is supposed to be 132nd, which technically should be bigger than the 135th. And here we have the uh, upper part of the main body. Oops. And we got this kind of, the box is actually upside down. Let me see if I can uh, find, here it is, I actually took it out already. This is the upper body, and this isn't even the full part of it. This is probably from just behind the center part. So you can obviously, it's nearly twice as big. Um, much, much larger. Uh, as far as uh, detail, uh, actually the vinyl kit has a few of these kind of notches dug in. Whereas the plastic one has some smaller ones that are there. So very similar as far as the detail, at least on this section of it. So I'm going to be starting with this one. And the first thing to do always on these vinyl kits is to, you have to cut away this uh, excess flashing. And you simply heat that up. And the easiest way I found is just using a, a blow dryer. And you don't have to leave it on long. This comes really soft. And then get a sharp exacto knife and cut it off. And there will be instructions on where to cut it. But typically you'll be able to see where it's at. So we have to clean up all the parts and get those going. So that being said, let's just get started. All right, working on the assembly here. I've trimmed away a lot of the flashing that you have to trim away. Uh, this section right here, I had to trim away a pretty good amount that came all the way around. And this actually kind of goes in here. However, I cut away a little too much off the uh, side here. Uh, this part right here kind of comes in like this and you can see where I've added in some styrene to super glue that in there because I had a little bit some holes showing there. So you just have to be careful uh, when you're cutting this through to kind of uh, put the pieces together and see exactly how they're going to fit together. The instructions aren't real clear on where to cut it. It's kind of actually fairly vague. So I've decided not to light this kit. I know I'm going to be lighting the other one, the plastic one. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of room for lighting and stuff. Not impossible. Uh, just, I know I'm going to be lighting the other one. So with this one, I'm not going to bother with all that. Uh, we still have to a lot of assembly and have to figure out how I'm going to uh, mount this. Um, I have an um, aluminum rod here. It's kind of big. I may go buy a brass rod. Uh, but I need to find a way to mount this. It doesn't come with a display stand, so obviously I don't want it just kind of sitting on the ground. So I'm going to, the plan right now is to uh, put a mounting rod in it somewhere and attach it to a stand, excuse me. So before I do that, uh, I think I need to fill this with like some expanding foam because uh, these two uh, parts of the ship attach like that and they're just flat surfaces and I don't, I'm worried there's a lot that's going on here. You have a, a big tail section, so there's a lot of weight, and I'm afraid that that's not a very uh, good connection there. So I'm going to plan is to fill these with some expanding foam and then run some rods between them that actually will have some better contact to go in there. So that's the plan right now. So just still working. I still have a lot of trim work to do. I'm just kind of getting these pieces together, and uh, let's keep at it. All right, I'm working on getting it all put together here. And as you can see, I've 
taking the uh, two kind of halves of the uh, ship here and filled it with some expanding foam. And then this was uh, kind of bubbling out like that. Just uh, kind of made sure that it was, once it got going and expanding, I kind of made sure it was off the ground that it wouldn't kind of drip all down the sides here and stick to the sides. It would kind of just be coming straight out and downward like that. So then I just took a uh, hobby saw and was able to kind of cut straight through. And I'm going to take some sandpaper and clean up the edges here. And the same thing with the tail section. Uh, just cut that here. And I'm going to take some sandpaper and sand that to where we got a nice section. And now it'll keep it from collapsing in over time. And because it is vinyl and it's hollow and it'll help hold its shape a lot better. But also uh, we're going to have to connect these two sections. So I think the plan right now is I'm going to take a... Uh, a number of toothpicks and just put it in here. It's pretty firm in there. Obviously, I'm going to super glue that in the place, um, but I'm going to put several through here and then I'll just be able to push this into position and then um, I'll be able to glue it uh, further from there. So it'll give us a nice uh, kind of mechanical bond too, as well as just the glue around here. I'll actually have these uh, toothpicks and they'll be super glue on that, holding that in place. So I think that'll be enough to hold that in place. This is going to have the added weight of the tail sections. I have uh, took a metal rod. I believe this was an old bicycle spoke. And I actually had to kind of grind, grind it down flat to get it up in here. I think it kind of goes up to right about here. And it'll protrude out. And I've already kind of tested it um, with a hole right there. And it'll kind of go into place here. And then uh, we'll have the other one. And I made sure to offset them so the metal rods aren't hitting with each other. But I'll have to uh, first drill a hole in there, and then that will come in there. We'll have to fill this uh, seam line in once we get all that into place. But that'll keep um, that hole our tail section and keep it from drooping down. So uh, we have all this. Uh, these parts were a little confusing uh, to put together. The instructions weren't clear. And I don't have, this is the landing gear, there's four um, pieces to the landing gear, or four different landing gears, there's several pieces, I believe there was one, two, three, this is two parts, so there's five parts to every landing gear, and you have to drill a little hole in there, you don't want to cut this section out there, it kind of looks like a gun when I first looked at it, um, but it's not, it's just part of the landing gear, it goes in there, we'll put a little super glue, make that a final bond once we get it positioned right. And these will go up. There's two shorter ones and two long ones. And these will go into position and they connect to like these ball joints here. You have this circular piece. And they come in here, something like that. So we'll have to get those in position. The other two will go on the rear. We had to uh, make these ball. This is actually two parts. And you have to make these ball sections, so that's a little challenging to get those round like that. But they will connect in here, and the rear landing gear connects to those ball joints. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get it all assembled, and then we'll come back, and we'll start working on getting it primed. All right, I have the main body together. I'm putting the expanding foam in there and then I ran like four different toothpicks uh, between the two, super glued them in and then super glued around the connecting point. And it made a really strong bond and uh, it seems like it's on there really good. Uh, as you can see I'm doing a lot of putty work. I'm using some Bondo glazing putty. Uh, even though this went on and it's a good, it's nice and secure, I uh, couldn't help it overlapped a little bit and a little bit of a gap right here so you can tell where I've taken this Bondo glazing putty and worked around it. I had a pretty large gap between the two tail sections as you can see I filled in there. So just working on that. Uh, I'll probably have a few more coats. I'll probably put a primer coat on it pretty soon. Uh, that'll help bring out imperfections and we can still sand on it and plus the primer coat will help uh, fill in some of the minor imperfections on it. And, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start attaching the rest of the uh, the landing gear, I have to attach the weapon pod that goes right here, and then uh, we'll do the primer coat. Also, I've uh, put in some brass tubing right here. This goes up um, probably a couple inches into the model. It goes through two different sections and into the foam, and it's really secure. And so that way I'll be able to detach it from the base. Um, 
uh, this will fit into this brass tubing. Yes, this is this is a size smaller, so I'll be able to sit on that like that, and that way we can uh, display it from the center part. I'll have to get it balanced correctly, but then if I want to take it somewhere, I can take it off like that. So I think that worked out pretty well. That's in there nice and firm. It's not going anywhere. Like I said, it's going through two different sections of the vinyl and into the foam. So that's keeping it uh, really snug, really secure. And uh, I don't even have it glued in, but I'll probably put in some extra thin um, uh, CA glue around there just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. So it's getting there and uh, getting close to painting it. All right, I've been just working on covering up the seams. Uh, I think I have it pretty well. I remember these two parts came together and we had a seam that ran all the way across, kind of down through the center of here, uh, through here. Uh, still a little bit more clean up on here. It's not too visible, so I'm not quite as worried about it as I was right here. I spent a lot of time uh, sanding and filling and kind of see where I have sanded it back down uh, to get that a smooth look. I really wanted that smooth, so when we try to get that chrome-like appearance that that would be nice and smooth. We'll see, see the uh, seam that used to be there. We also had a real nasty seam right here. And a lot of work getting that kind of smooth, smoothed out. Another place was right here where this part connected to this part. Kind of see, you can see all the putty and stuff I've used. And the only thing left is to really kind of attach the uh, weapon. I kind of kept that off because of where it was at and it was handling a lot. But I'm about to put that back on. I've wet sanded over uh, most of the model, especially this top surface that is going to be the main focus of the model. To, uh, uh, wet sand it with some thousand grit sandpaper to get that nice smooth. Uh, the plan is I'm going to put a gloss black coat over the entire model and then I'm going to try to use this uh, spastic mirror chrome. I saw some, watched some videos and this had like the best chrome effect. Uh, out of a spray can. There's definitely other things that I've looked into, but we're going to give that a go, see how that turns out, and uh, hopefully we'll have a nice finish. I'm not terribly worried if it's exactly a mirror finish. I just want a nice chrome look. Uh, but I think the body works come out pretty nice. Again, we had that seam and gap that was right in here. This took a lot of work. Um, this, uh, I primed it, sanded it, primed it, sanded it, and uh, finally kind of got it to where it was at now. So quite a bit of work to get that to where um, it looked uh, acceptable. So just going to move in to put my gloss black coat on it now. Well, I woke up this morning to this. This is a bummer, and this is my fault. Uh, as you can see, the paint is cracked all up all across the surface here. Not what I was wanting. It's my fault because I didn't wait 24 hours uh, to put on a second coat. I only waited about 8 to 10 hours. It seemed dry and I got a little impatient and I put a, uh, I did a little wet sanding and put a second coat. And that's what happens sometimes when you get impatient. So, instead of being able to get this back in focus, uh, start applying the chrome paint, now I have to spend a good part of the day sanding that off. So, that's what happens when you get impatient. All right, well, after a lot of sanding, I repainted it. This time I used Model Master acrylic paint and painted it with my airbrush. It's not quite as glossy, but it's uh, much uh, much more controlled uh, spray paint and not as thick. So I'm gonna move on to doing my chrome. And again, I'm gonna attempt to try to see how the spastics work out, this mirror chrome, and spray it on there. And hopefully that'll turn out well. So, a little nervous about how all this, hopefully it'll look good. So, we'll come back once I get that coat on. Alright, well here's our finished Horizons Terminator 2 Aerial Hunter Killer. I finished up with the, the black coat on it, and then I applied a chrome finish on it, and I used, this is called Spastics uh, Mirror Chrome. And uh, painted the whole thing. Uh, wasn't quite getting that uh, chrome look all over. In some places, like at the tips of the engines, these nozzles, they, they came out um, very chrome-like, very polished, mirror-like. But I wasn't quite getting that on the surface. I 
buffed it out, sanded it down with some uh, uh, 12,000 grit uh, sanding sponge. I uh, didn't use some car polish. I reapplied some chrome. I did that a few times just trying to get that, that uh, chrome look on there. Could never quite achieve a chrome, um, but I kind of finally settled for this. It's more of a polished metal look. Um, over it, I think overall it still looks uh, pretty nice. Uh, maybe in the future I can find something or try something different to go for that chrome look. Um, but overall, I think it's turned out pretty well. Uh, the base here, we uh, added in a little decal with the Skynet symbol. Uh, I put some resin on top of that so it's secure. Again, it uh, comes off our base. We have our little connecting point. You can see what's a little bit more chromey on the bottom side. I think I had a little bit, it was a little bit more glossy on the paint. I didn't get that spider webbing on the bottom of the ship. So it just didn't quite turn out on the top. So that's it for our vinyl kit here. It was a learning experience. First time trying to do a chrome finish on something like this. It's a little bit challenging. It's a nice size model, as you can see. Uh, let's see what we have here. It's uh, uh, approximately about 15 inches long and probably about 10 inches or so wide. And it's nicely detailed. It's just different. Vinyl uh, reacts a whole lot differently or works a lot differently than plastic. So anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Until next time, everybody have a good one.